like you all have been busy. I'm in the server right now looking at all these new high scores. Uh, or at least these great competitions. You all are doing great. Keep it up. Uh, a couple housekeeping things real quick, and then we'll jump into Search and Rescue, uh, where we left off last week. And we'll look at this week's new mission, Supply and Logistics, which really helps us think about ocean-going ships. Um, so the Search and Rescue mission is really good for us to think about this force equals mass times acceleration, where it takes a long time for this million-pound craft to get going. But then it takes a long time to stop, right? And then we have the rescue boat and the helicopter, which help us explore the same idea, but with the rescue boat much lighter. And the helicopter has much less resistance. It's a whole different ball game once we're up in the air. If this is your first time, you can download Fleet uh, at on fleetengineering.org. And you'll be able to uh, install the game great I just want to make sure we're up and running and um, so you go to download fleet you can download it if you're having any issues with downloading the game playing the game thinking about how to do a summer project with the game you can email us it's at fleet at naval and I'm gonna go into the the notes that we were taking last week and we are gonna grab we're gonna do the same type of notes this week so I'm gonna grab the column here so that oh no Two, need one more two more extra rows uh, but you can see the email address here that we are going to you can email us at any time fleet at naval engineers.org and we're happy to help talk with you about uh, the game how to get into the game or uh, if you have a project or something that you want to research especially history wise we're doing a lot of history this summer uh, so today is 626 so that meant this date was 619. Look how good I am at subtracting 7. All right. And then uh, we will do the speed test, the maneuver test, and the rescue mission today to start out. And then we're going to go and look at the heavy, the supply and logistics rescue mission. So that's the outline of what's going on. So when you download the game, it'll give you an installer. You open it up, and then you keep clicking next to help you uh, start it up. Some of you might it might think that it's uh, you might have to do a, an extra security thing because the American Society of Naval Engineers is not Microsoft, and we're not a recognized software development company yet. Maybe we will be soon. And some computers don't like that as much. Um, once you get the game to this part, you click launch. And if this is your first time playing the game, you'll need to oh. you'll need to click this button where it says don't have an account sign up now. And this field you'll put Fleet Rocks 2018. All right? And then you'll go to the next screen and you'll put in all your information. But I do have an account and so once you have an account, you, there's no email, it's just a username. And this is what will show up in the in the uh, high scored boards. And my password. Alright, and then it will bring you into the game uh, with a pretty good cut screen. I'm going to move, make this a little bit bigger. So we can see it a little bit easier. There we go. And we'll put this in the middle too. There we go. All right. So we're almost finished loading. Uh, and so the one other thing I wanted to mention, there's a setting. And the settings are up in the upper right corner. And you can click on the setting to change the graphics so that um, if you have a, a great fast computer you can improve so I'm clicking on this person here getting the settings so the quality I'm going fastest graphics for us but you can make the graphics as good as you want uh, you could also click here to make it full screen and so if you if I do that it looks like this which is pretty sharp I'm just trying to see how 
So that covers everything. I'm going to undo that by hitting Control F. And so you can hit Control F to make it full screen and Control F to make it not full screen. But for getting to some of the buttons, it'll be nice to hit Control F. All right. So we are not going to do quick play, but I think quick play is awesome. Quick play is no budgets, lets you really explore whatever you want to explore. Um, and we can really build the, the ship of our dreams. However, we are engineers, so we have objectives. We have requirements. We have money and budgets. It's terrible. This is where we're going to go later. But for now, we're going to do this first mission. And this is the big week of competition in the search and rescue that we're wrapping up now. And so as we get into the mission, we, wow, this is slow today, but uh, this is our dry dock, and so this is where we're going to work on our ship. You can hit escape to make these things go quicker once you're used to them. You can see the ship that we left off with last time, okay? So this is actually your ship. This isn't just like a, a video cut screen. But this is how we pull the ship into here, and then we pump all the water out so that we can work on it. We can do our welding. We can do all the kind of uh, hard work it takes to get these ships fitted uh, and uh, keep the maintenance going. So we have a helicopter. I can just click on things if I want to take a look at it. We can also click this ship button to view the components on our ship, view the pieces. And I am going to take a peek uh, at the engine. And we got the turbocharged diesel. That sounds awesome. We have a propeller. We have our high efficiency. We can look over at our mission checklist to see that we still have $19,000 to spend. But we started with $2 million. So it's a pretty good percentage spent. We are, we're doing all right. And we can't go over budget. Uh, we can look at our weight. And we will go up to structure and water tank. And I need to hit control F to get to this button for a second. And I'm going to undo it. So uh, this weight is at 431,000. Our ideal weight is supposedly is 450,000. But we found out last time that if we make the ship as light as possible, we gain some seconds. And so we'll take a look at that data momentarily. So if I go 427,427 point and seven hundredths of a kilogram, that's too low. But if I go a little bit more, we'll, we'll end up at 427,695 and six tenths of a kilogram. And now I click done. So let's take a peek at the data from last week where we, we reduced the weight to 427,535 down the road. So now you can see that data in the middle there. And we were able to, to get our speed test down to 100 seconds, so a minute 40, and our maneuver test down to 84 seconds. And we started off, the combat haul was fast. Uh, but once we went cutter haul, we were around 105, 121, 108 seconds. So by reducing the weight, we were able to save eight seconds. Uh, we also were able to increase the propeller uh, from baseline to high efficiency. So both of these changes probably helped us get shave off these eight seconds in the speed test. So we've got rescue equipment, and we're also bringing pump equipment because one of our objectives is to salvage the ship. And we don't have to do it, but if we're trying to set the score for the best boat ever, uh, it's a good idea, right? So, uh, I don't know if there's anything that we can add. We reduce the weight. We can take over uh, our data. And we, our new weight is 427,695. Point six, and I think we're ready to go test. If you're curious, these uh, dots in the middle of your ship are part of this uh, the more advanced physics that you can look at with these ships, and they relate to how gravity and water are pushing their forces on your boat. 
and and the the shorthand thing is that you want them to line up so gravity and, and the water are pushing at the same spot if they're pushing at different spots it makes the ship less stable uh, let's take a quick peek through things that we can add we have the cargos we already have a superstructure there's no propulsion materials left to add we can't afford comms we already have a helo deck that's what gave us access to our helicopter we already have a helicopter on our helo deck and we don't have room or money for a rescue boat so we are in a good spot so this is where we are going to see how stable our craft is while we t get ready to take it out before we can take any ship out on the high seas we need to make sure first that it's safe for people to be on so that's what the fixed roll position also this is called the stability test these uh, and this ship is so stable it hardly moves uh, if you remember from the combat hall uh, it can definitely move a lot more than that we are going to get to the mission momentarily but we are going to start with the speed test I'm hitting W so Minecraft keys work great I'm gonna click this button to make time go faster so we can do more fun stuff today if you prefer the arrow keys work just as well the one thing I wouldn't recommend but does work is you can steer with the mouse but it's unnecessarily difficult you can just hit D and A if you like the Minecraft keys or left and right arrow and you can just get down the track and basically what we're doing now is making sure that we can get to the shipwreck quickly uh, so we want to make sure that we have a fast ship and then we want to make sure we can maneuver it well when we get to the shipwreck and then we do want to be able to rescue people as quickly as possible but we aren't going to do the rescue practice today so that way we can take a couple hacks at the supply and logistics mission which is a bit longer all right so the, and this is another note if if you are using this uh, simulator for research so it's a game but it's really a simulator uh, it's a great thing to do multiple tests so that you can see things like this that last time we got 100 seconds this time we got 101 seconds and what I would do is re replicate each test two or three times and take the average that way you're getting very close to a true score alright so now in the maneuvering test we I'm again hitting W I'm again hitting speed 2x if this is if you're getting started you may not want to hit speed 2x yet even though the boat starts out so slow uh, it's pretty easy to lose control in the back end of this first turn so I'm keeping the red buoys on my right and the green buoys on my left and my goal is to get down there as quickly as possible because we're using these tests to collect data it's going to be pretty important for you to find a way through this path through this track that makes you feel comfortable and replicate that as closely as possible each time so that way the data is uh, comparable so now we've got 80 seconds here so we got the same ship characteristics we didn't go back to the dry dock and we got 80 seconds last time I did it in 84 seconds that feels like noise based on driving and current but maybe we did get a little bit faster even though our weights basically the same we're actually 100 kilograms 150 kilograms heavier this time interesting thing that we could explore if we had more time but there's never enough time uh, today we're doing search and rescue in sunny weather you can change the weather if you would like to we are going to keep it sunny today uh, and so this mission is to get out as quickly as possible to the shipwreck and we didn't bring comms if we did we'd have a radar here so we have to use the information from this radar tower to get to the shipwreck it's going to direct us this is like a huge number line but what it is is it's the north is 0 and 360 right here and we use it to uh, find the directions, find where the how we should be getting to the shipwreck in the quickest way possible. So I need to go, all right, 320, so 300, 310, 320, 330. I need to be going right through here. I think the shipwreck's right here, but I can't quite see it yet. Uh, because it's open ocean, we will be able to 
get a pretty good glimpse of it from pretty far away. And then I can even uh, somewhat ignore this information. It says it's in sight. I don't quite see it yet. But maybe you do. Um, oh, here it is. Right here. Look at that. That's, I'm proud of that vision. Now we are headed towards a shipwreck. So this is why we want to do the speed test. If we got into this spot and we saw that we're not doing too well, uh, it's kind of late in the game, right? We already spent, even at speed t time going twice as fast, spent 90 seconds going in this direction. You can start to see some specks here. That's where our mariners are that we're going to have to rescue around this shipwreck. And then we can salvage the ship by clicking on it uh, since we brought the pump equipment. One thing I do recommend is we got up to 25 knots at some point here, but it's good to keep an eye on your max speed. That's going to be a piece of data that the game doesn't record for you very well, but is something that you definitely want to keep an eye on as far as 356 and 25. All right, so we got a pretty good spread of these people. Ooh, it's going to be hard to set the high score. So I'm immediately slowing down, taking off speed 2x, turning right. I don't want to hit anyone. That's very terrible. A human and a boat of this size do not mix. It's not a friendly meeting. And you can kind of see I'm just slowly but surely clicking on the boat. So when I am in range, it will start to rescue it. Oh, it is starting to rescue it already. So now I'm trying not to run over these three guys. I'm going to slow down too. As soon as it starts rescuing someone, I'm going to fly away. And... I don't know, this probably is not going to be our best mission. So let me go save these people who are way out here. And so when I get over top of them, it feels like I have to drive a little bit past them to be directly over top of them. The button pops back out. I click it, and it drops rescue equipment to them. So you really need to go a little bit farther than you would expect. So if you're having difficulty with the helicopter, try driving a little bit further. So I'm going to save this person. And then I'm going to have to assess. So I got the boat salvaged. I saved two people with the helicopter. I think I saved one person with the ship. Yep, just one. And I was not paying good attention. Oh, I see the other person straight ahead. Eh, let's try and rescue him with the ship. We're not going to win anyways. We're not going to be first. Uh, but we can, we can do a little practice. So if I want to, I can take the ship, the helicopter back up. But I'm going to try and save these two people with the boat. So I'm driving close and slow to him. And then close and slow to the next person. And you can tell I'm maxing out the speed actually because it takes so much force to get this heavy ship underway. But then I put the engines in full reverse. And we have a... We have zero collision, so let's write down this data. I, you can see I took some notes here. We need to start putting, so we got 237. These are our points. Max speed, time to shipwreck. Time, total time. So you can tell if we compare these two times, we can see that it took me 3 minutes and 13 seconds to save everyone. And I know most of you are going to do much better than that after some good practices. We had zero collisions, which is something definitely to be proud of. And then we salvaged the ship by clicking on it and bringing the rescue equipment. And then the last thing, and this is something that if you are shooting for a high score, I think that this is going to be an interesting thing for you to track. Oops, I don't want to insert a whole row. I want to insert cells. 
Shift. Oh, that's a. I need to move these. All right. So I'm gonna try to keep this data the same. So six hundred six minutes and nine seconds is uh three hundred and nine. Oh no, three hundred sixty nine seconds. And then uh, I'm going to add, I'm going to make this score breakdown. And for those of you that can, are going to approach this game scientifically, this is how I suggest starting, and then you can improve on this method. Initial direction was 314. And I'll put degrees here. I think that you're going to find that the current comes from a, a certain direction in the game for the most part. About, you know, it has a random variable in the video game programming. But for the most part, the currents in this game, this game is based in California. They come down from Alaska. And so the currents are coming from right to left as you go away from the coast. The more that I have to go north, the more I'm going into the current and into the waves. Uh, for the most part, you know, the waves could come from a different perspective, but usually the waves and the current are both coming from the north. If I get a, and this is again a random variable, if I get where I get to go down to 230 southwest, then the current and the waves tend to push me. I hope that my max speed reflects that Although sometimes you'll be able to get a temporary max speed, that's pretty good. But we, even though we max out at 25, once I start talking about it and we are paying real attention to it in that 3 minute to 356 piece, my speed was much closer to 22 knots. And that's just not a speed that's going to get us up into the leaderboard. Uh, so this is the kind of data level that you can collect, that you can track to really be focused on setting the high score in the search and rescue uh, and then let's take a similar perspective on the supply and logistics so I'm gonna hit dry dock there's no way to go all the way back to headquarters from that screen and we are going to go to headquarters now so that we can switch the mission alright so I'm gonna hit escape here and so it has new components so we have the same basics right Every, all of our ships need hulls propellers engines rudders and then the superstructure the deck house where the the sailors uh, navigate the ship where they are, have all their the uh, most of their equipment stored and all the electronics and those capabilities are stored in addition in this mission our goal is to take this equipment to uh, naval bases across the ocean and we'll look at the map when we get started but the first thing that we need to choose is a hull we want to choose this hull and if we want to we could make it really long or really short based off of what we just saw in the last mission let's start with a short haul uh, and what I'm saying that is that we saw that weight was uh, a big determiner in the, in the fact that we want it to be as light as possible to be fast uh, through the um, speed pieces and speed again is going to be an important part of this mission so we're just going to do one length of the hull and now this gives us the opportunity to add in a bow and we can see that the mat they're very similar and so we're going to choose this one and then the stern which is the back of the boat we only have one option but now our boats haul just the haul alone and so just we call it displacement because it's the amount of water that it pushes out of the way but it's directly equal to the the force that the water is pushing up on the ship which means that the weight of this ship is 770,542 kilograms right now. That's 
our ship with nothing on it is not quite two times heavier than the last ship we made, but it's getting close. And, and in fact, by the time we get up to 1,055,000 kilograms, we will be right there. All right, so let us, let's start checking off this list. We, we gotta go find a propeller under propulsion, props, all these good words for saying, make water move and get us going forward. So we have a propeller and I put the expensive one on. I, we have an engine, I'm putting the expensive one on. If you have trouble getting out of the dry dock through the stability test, make sure your engine's in the center, which is at up here. You can see in the background here, the engine is actually at the center of the ship when it's at the top here. And so that allows us to have all the weight in the very center, just like all the weight in our bodies in the very center. And we just have a little bit of arms and a little bit of hair that's off the center, right? All right, rudders. Under structure, we got a rudder. Uh, hard decision here. Let's go low drag first, and then we will run the mission again with high turn force and see what we like. We did. We found low drag was very beneficial on the speed test. We're going to have to do a lot of navigating in this one. So deck house. Oh, that's a superstructure, and we can choose one of these. Let's choose this one because it has a little bit less weight. And I want to put as much weight as I can below the waterline, not above it, so our, sh our ship is more stable. You can see these additions have increased our weight to almost 900,000 kilograms, but we're still not heavy enough. Let's finish building the ship out, and then we will uh, check, we will fix the weight. So we need to bring equipment, rescue equipment. We need to bring two of them. I'm going to put these two on the front. So we're not done yet. We need another cargo of rescue equipment. So I got these two up here now. And then we're gonna bring cargo. Pump equipment. And I'm gonna spread them out. And if you, you know, this is very symmetrical. It's very even when we divide it, when we draw a line in half. And if you've made a sea perch or if you've worked with any kind of boat construction ideas, uh, you know that being symmetrical really helps make the ship as balanced as possible. Oh no, I am going to be over budget because I am too light and I need to add a ballast tank and it costs $500. $500 over. I really wish I could just... This is terrible. Alright, so let's fix the weight first. One problem at a time. So I'm putting the weight in the, the lowest containers. And we are not quite on the margin yet. So let's max these out and see if we get a green check mark. Not quite. All right, so let's put a little bit up here, see if that fixes it. No. Nope. So I'm going to put a little bit here and here. So I want to make sure whatever I do on the right side, I do on the left side. And now we are okay. So it's a hunt, one million. All right, so I'm going to move all this data to the right. Insert sill, shift right. We're going to do that many times. And now let us take some data. So we're going to do, we are going to do the speed and maneuverability test. We have the cargo hull. And I'm going to put a 1 here because we only chose one section. That's probably something that we want to keep an eye on. Our weight is 1,200,000. 1, kilograms. Uh, we have the turbo for now. We got to find a way to save some money. We have the uh, low drag rudder, the high efficiency propeller, and then each of. I'm gonna put an equal sign here and a times and a four, and we'll come back to this. 
All right, so each of the things, so we're done here. And honestly, it's really easy to click done when you're filling up these tanks. But what you saw I was doing is I just kept clicking in the new containers. Don't click done until you're completely finished filling it up with water. But now we got to fix our budget. Uh, so, at, all right, the weight thing. So we got one container. I need to see what it says. Oh, it doesn't say anything. Uh, our containers, our cargo containers, all weigh 4,000 kilograms. And we have four of them. So the weight from the cargoes is 4,000 times four. Oh, don't give me an error. Uh, maybe I'll take the comma out. We'll see if that works. There we go. 16,000 kilograms. Uh, we didn't bring anything else. And we'll see the time soon, but unfortunately we have a little bit of work to do to get out. We've spent too much money, so I can't remove the ballast tanks because then I'll be too light. I can't remove the bow, the, else the ship would, would fall apart. I can't remove the cargoes because I'm only bringing what they made me bring. I can't change the hull. I, brought, I used as little hull as possible. I can't. Ch well, I could change the rudder, but they all cost ten thousand dollars, so it actually doesn't save me any money. I can't change the stern and save money, and the superstructures both cost five hundred thousand dollars. So there's no money to save there. I don't have any advanced things. The engine I could change, and I could save us a hundred thousand dollars. But turbocharged diesel sounds pretty awesome medium speed diesel sounds sometimes we need it but let's try and change the propeller actually let's take the propeller let's go away from the uh, high efficiency let's downgrade and it knows that I need a propeller to the baseline model now I'm back to this familiar number of 19,500 under budget so I've, I am under budget. We can take this ship out. We can test it out. Uh, maybe our having to save money on the propeller, we decide, isn't the worst thing. But we probably want to test it out. I mean, if we're really being thorough, we can test it to see if it's more important to have a better propeller or a better engine. Um, but we only have a few places. woo -hoo -hoo! That ship... I passed, but that is absurd. Uh, that was quite the rock. Uh, we, that, that's we may so we went light on the water and the stability tank on another mission that may not be the best idea. So again, speed test, hit W, hit speed 2x, trying to get down the course as quickly as possible. We'll record this data. Just an important number for us to know just a little bit more on this directionality up here you can see west is 270 degrees because it's halfway between 240 and 300 and so it, each one of these little tech the large tick marks is 10 degrees the small tick marks show five degrees just it's uh for the search and rescue that's how we're going to navigate we really don't need it too much for the mission that we're about to do uh, it's much more about getting comfortable with the base layouts and being able to navigate each of the harbors as quickly as possible. We also want to think through the map and uh, make sure that we are being consistent on how we uh, or at least very thoughtful about how which base we go to after you know how we think about going through the bases. So last time, what, I was at 101 seconds. I'm already above 120 seconds. This ship is much slower. But this ship is going to do some incredible things. So we needed to change the hull design to make it uh, applicable for this mission to go be as ocean-going as we are. And we have 2 minutes and 26 seconds, so we're at 146 seconds overall. Uh... Oh, we didn't use the high efficiency. We used baseline. And I can delete the word propeller because these are all the propellers. All right, so then let's take it through the maneuverability test, get another comparison here. 
And so we don't need to go back to the dry dock. We just go to missions. We choose our other mission. In this mission, these are the only tests and mission that we have. And we can't even change the weather for supply and logistics. So we will use the maneuverability test. It's the same exact thing that we saw in the search and rescue maneuverability test, but our ship is much harder to steer, much slower in the beginning. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I immediately click speed 2x to make sure that we get through this as quickly as possible and we're getting down the track. All right, so we're getting close, a little bit more turning. You can do either, right? You can see I button mash from time to time, just slam down D and do a hard turn. Other times you can kind of feather it through by like clicking A. It's all up to you. You have many options in steering the craft. The one thing I would encourage you to think about is that we engineer the ship, but we also engineer the, the execution of the mission. And so a lot of times you'll need to match up how you're solving the mission with uh, how you engineered the ship. You really want to think about engineering the solution. So what, we got three seconds less than two minutes, so we took 117 seconds. And now let us tr do the mission. So logistics mission. Nice. Oh no! Horrible typo sneaking in trying to go unannounced all right so now again we're not going back to dry dock we are going to do the mission so I'm going to hit M right away oh so M brings up the map so our mission is to deliver materials to these uh, islands we can cut across if we want to but I'm going to just do counterclockwise and then clockwise and we'll see uh, how that works out we have to figure out how to deliver these things to the each of the bases and you can see that these distances are quite extreme and we'll have a nice cut screen that get us through that so so the first thing is we got the shadowing around the uh, buoys let me make this go a little faster so, so that would be Crest Island because it's blue and we are turning left to go to Becker's Island, Beecher's Island. We're going this way. And and so this is called point-to-point -point navigation. So once you get out to these beacons at the ends of the harbors, then it's a very well-known established uh, track, basically. It's, it's almost like a train track, but it's in the water where we know it's best to go just following these headings to get to the next port. Uh, clearly, we can make modifications based on weather and other things that may pop up but that's the big idea for why we use these beacons to help us do this mission so once we get close to the beacon we go to this beautiful cut screen where it says hey your boat's taking a long time to go I think this trip is 3,400 nautical miles we get to see beautiful stars somehow we don't get too far from land initially uh, but we don't have to, uh, and we can also hit escape. We'll start hitting escape down the road, but I always like to let it play once. Um, it This is the big idea is that we are going out through the ocean over many days, and that's why we had to design our ship like this. And our goal is to deliver these materials to the harbor. And I think the harbor is behind this island. So we gotta, we got to get familiar with each of the harbor layouts. You may want to draw a map uh, of these islands. Maybe the first couple times you do this mission, you don't really go for score but for learning. And then you find your, your favorite path. And depending on which port you just left will change where you uh, enter each of the harbors at. So if I came in from... Uh, what was the other one? I'm going to hit M to check. Crest Island. I wouldn't start in the same spot. Uh, so we are driving into the um, harbor right here. And 
the one trick that's a video game trick but not a navy trick or a coast guard trick we don't need to slow down in this video game it just wants us to get into like the goal region so we can come in hot uh, and we will come in hot to each one of these the key is no collisions right uh, so no one would come into a harbor that fast but we are playing a video game so we will do that uh, and then it gives you a little bit of messages let me turn off my phone so that doesn't happen again and now they have removed some of the things if you find it's important oh no we got to turn hard right uh, I think I still hit the side so now we are trying to go out through the blue beacon and that's the white beacon. That's not the one we want. That's where we came. Blue. There we go. That's where we're going next. Uh, you may want to consider how you put these boxes on to match your preferred um, unloading. That said, these things weigh 4,000 kilograms and this boat weighs 1 million kilograms. So it may not have that big of an effect. That said, it never hurts to be as per you know as close to perfect as possible. Uh, and just see if it makes any difference. The problem is that the the, no, the data that we collect here is going to be pretty noisy because, you know, I'm making a lot of driving decisions that are very small in this simulator uh, that are hard to replicate to do the exact same thing each time. And the currents and the, and the uh, waves are different each time. So you may not be able, if it's a two second difference, may be hard to see in the mission. I'm going to hit escape this time so we can get through this thing twice. So now we're at the next base. If I go to the white beacons, I get back to where we started. So that's never a good idea. It seems like I, you know, it's always a sheltered harbor, right? So if it's your first time, you don't know where to go, go towards the mountains. Got to get closer to land. And so there's some good geology lessons in there, right? That even if these are islands... They're being formed by some processes that create pretty steep slopes. And then we are able to make some communities and some naval bases uh, on in the protected parts and the places that make the most sense where we can drive these huge ocean-going ships right up there. As opposed to this guy who evidently had a bad day and no one's fixed him up yet or at least cleaned up all that wreckage. The one thing that you'll need to get a little bit used to is you saw a turn turn left. You can't, you got to come into the opening, right? You can't just sneak into the side. So you really got to make sure that you're coming in from the right direction for the game to recognize that you made it to the goal. Excellent. And so now we, I'm hitting, I'm hitting W to go forward, but we're not going forward. And now I clicked again, and now we're able to go forward. I see in the comments a strong penny pincher accusation, which I completely agree with. These $500 would have been have the best propeller and the best engine. Seems worthwhile to me. But these program managers. So we just came from the pink. That means that we want to go to the red. That's the final island, the final place where we drop off. We just dropped off our two rescue equipments. Now we're going to drop off. I don't even remember what that is. Maybe it's pump equipment. Because I don't think helicopter fuel was the other one. But what will be nice is now our sailors can use this ladder, which we unceremoniously made difficult to use. Not even being considering. Consider, uh, having consideration for their needs. I guess that's the best way to say it. All right, so we're getting to the red buoy to do our last drop off. And then we will see our score. We will do a new score breakdown, and then we will run this back but go the other way. All right, so escape this time. All right, so, ooh. This looks different, and we're, looks like on the wrong side. Obviously, this is where we're going, but I think we need to go in from the other side. We also need to turn pretty hard so I don't hit a sandbar. Unsurprisingly, grounding your ship 
not well received by your point score or by uh, by other naval engineers but it looks like we're gonna have to do like a hard hairpin turn and if this is the way that I prefer to go this might speak to a need to use the uh, higher drag so I got low drag rudders but have the higher turn force rudders so I'm gonna use my weak rudders to make a hard turn and we'll see what happens I'm gonna check down too just so if it's bad I at least have oh no I turned too hard too quick that's good to know so more driver error but the boat could handle it maybe maybe are we getting around enough it's gonna be close so I'm right clicking on the mouse to spin around and look at this stuff I need I'm still oh you can see my fingers but I was still button holding down D and W and I just snuck in there it's a pretty interesting oh it doesn't let me look around it's a pretty interesting little island here though look at that tall volcano all right so let's break down this score we've got three thousand two hundred and seven points let's bring in all right so let's let's keep going with this data collection first and then we will insert cells shift right score breakdown so you'll this is the score breakdown that we just used before uh, but we don't need time to shipwreck but what we could do is record the time to each base and this is where I know that we're all socially distant and we're being as safe as possible but if you have siblings or someone in your household that would like to work with this you could work together where you could record time to first base time to second base time to third base uh, and, and really have that scientific note taker uh, I didn't even check out my max speed I was too busy talking uh, but let's get the points recorded as 3207, 3207, 3207. Total time 14 minutes and 9 seconds. Zero collisions. And now we don't have to worry about salvaging, but we worry about groundings. And I didn't do that either. That's good. We don't have an initial direction, but we traveled 11,585 kilometers and I'm gonna put km so I don't have to keep writing that uh, I'm gonna put question marks here because it's something that we should I should have checked but I did not check alright so we're gonna make one more run we're gonna do one change uh, we are going to change the uh, the rudder so that we go from low drag to high turn force and we are going to test everything one more time and so this is the mission that we're really going to focus on this week uh, I hope that you uh, have a lot of fun going to these bases I would really love to see if what someone makes a map so we gotta go to the dry dock to make that change map of these islands good cartographers out there can can do that study um, we are changing our rudder oh look at that it heard me knew where I need wanted to go I need to see that button I can't see it the other way so I removed the rudder and now when I go back to add something it brings me right to that it knows what I'm looking for so the low drag has this coefficient of drag of nine thousandths our high turn force has a coefficient of drag of fourteen thousandths so it seems small but it makes a big difference the uh, surface area is the same the cost and the weight are the same so I'm not changing anything else about my ship but I did change the rudder and so let's take away these times let's recreate this data and again if we see a small difference 
we can suspect that we made a change that we that it's either better or worse we'll see what which one it is uh but we would really want to do multiple tests that again probably something that we could look at weight on this ship maybe that's what we'll do when we start next week we'll look at the weight um and do a big uh, exploration to see what the right weight is for this craft. Oh, uh, W, or up arrow, and speed 2x. The water drinking hand necessitated using the other arrow buttons. But um, it's, it's hard for us to make any claim about whether this is truly better or worse. We'll see which one we end up on. But if we did it three times in our averages and we looked at that data, uh, we would be more confident in making that kind of claim. And so that would be the kind of data that we really want to uh, to nail. And uh, yeah, uh, there's no Tokyo Drift with this uh, million kilogram ship, ship but uh, occasionally we need to try it as much as possible we put ourselves in a pretty rough position by going that way through the islands but uh it was the ocean going ship equivalent of that and honestly quite a video game applica application uh, a ship would definitely have a different process for doing that work and there would probably even be if there was ever a need to do something like that Putting a, a 360 degree propeller in Ozopod would help us have that maneuverability, which we do not have on this ship. So now we have uh, 2 minutes 38 seconds. So we have 120 plus 38, 158. So we slowed down 8 seconds. Uh, so we may not have, we're losing time, but maybe we need to gain that turning ability. I don't know. We made the turn, so I'm not sure we we might be fixing a problem that we really didn't have. But it's good to explore. Don't need to be the best right away. A lot of times it's worthwhile to learn as much as you can about the designs and the possibilities. And it might help open up a, a whole new solution that really does help propel you into that top five of the leaderboard. Uh, so again getting down this maneuverability track. Uh, I think that you know we saw an eight second difference in the speed test, probably expecting a six seconds slower in this test. And if you know that kind of data does, that's a big enough gap where I'm pretty sure there is something there. Uh, I'd wanna do multiple tests to confirm how much of a difference is there. But we have gotten slower, but we can turn better. Uh, and we will see if we need it to turn better. There's uh, something else in, worth t talking about where the notes I'm taking is very numeric. They're, you know, I'm writing the numbers of things. It's kind of, it's called quantitative data. You make two minutes and 12 seconds, so 132. Wow, that's a whole 15 seconds more. So even in the track where we're doing turns, we're not really getting better times. Not seeming like the best thing. But so first we went boom, boom, boom. Now we're going to go this way. All right. So I'm hitting M, M to <laughs> make that go away. I'm hitting D and right. And you can see the time starts once I hit M. So if you need to study the map, don't feel like you're being rushed. Uh, so we are taking a hard right. And now we are going for this bo uh, beacon and we will get down the track. Um, so we, we'll see. I, I think that the time that we're losing speed-wise with this rudder change is pretty significant. You know, if the speed test, the maneuverability test, we lost 15 seconds. Uh, in a 14-minute long mission, it's going to compound itself a lot. I mean, that was a two-minute long maneuvering test. So we could be adding up to like a minute and a half or two minutes to our time just based on the rudder selection. So you really want to investigate these ships and see how the changes are going to affect you because your ship's always going to be in motion and always having to start up. So you uh, 
little changes in the speed test, little changes in the maneuvering test are going to make a big difference on your score. So I already see the base a little bit over here. So this time we're coming in somewhat easier to this base. And we just have this straight shot. We still have this huge volcano mountain over here. But we just have a straight shot into here. And it's such a luxurious, easy time. I can take a peek. I know I need to go to the pink uh, island next. Oh no, the blue. Gotta go to blue. So I got to I got to take the Tokyo Drift turn out of the dry dock. I'm not sure that's better. This would be a good spot, and unfortunately, I talk too much, and I don't have the brain with to do both of them right now. But you might really want to start recording the amount of time it takes you to do this base both ways. See if it's faster to come in from the backside and then take that turn in at full speed or whether it's faster to take the turn when you're just starting out um, which doesn't feel right because it's a slow thing to do and we got this island right here which is really going to cause a problem we're going to have to decide pretty quickly when we're turning whether we can get inside of it or have to go outside of it and actually I'm going to turn right which is a little counterintuitive first but that gives me room for the stern of my ship to swing around without bumping into here. And now we got to make a decision. I think I can make it. And I did make it. And I'm going to overturn a little bit because I'm worried about a sandbar being out in here. But we are good to go to the blue beacon now. So we are running out. Uh, I think that we'll be able to get some good times now. So we got one base down. We dropped off our pump equipment. We still got our helicopter fuel and our two rescue containers. So we have two more deliveries to make. We have two more cut screens to escape through. But, you know, if you need to see like seven or eight sunsets in a 14 minute span, you could enjoy some uh, cut screens while you can play this mission. Got many options, but we are rushing. All right, so we are getting down to this base. This looks like a big turn. I'm going to go through here and then turn that way. Uh, it is quite challenging because I don't want to get close to that island. But I don't want to put myself too far to the left, to the port side. Because uh, every extra bit I have to travel adds extra time, which reduces my score. Get a new perspective on this sad craft that's a permanent shipwreck over here. But maybe one day someone will salvage him. Uh, and now I need to take a pretty hard turn, right? So... Not too hard, but coming in pretty hard now. Just button mash D. Oop, too hard. And coming in right around that rock. Trying not to hit that rock, but trying to sneak in the front side because it's the closest. And we got it. One delivery left. Oh, and I'm going to... Oh, I got to let it click before I see the map. We are going to pink. I know where I went to. You don't need to tell me. We were remembering. Uh, and let's see how... F oh, shoot. We are turning into that rock. I think I avoided the collision there, but that was close. Long ship. Oh, I already forgot. We're going to pink. Okay. I said it out loud and still didn't remember. Uh, but let's take a peek at our... Um, our top speed as we get out of here because we should be able to get pretty close to it by the time we get to that pink buoy we got up to 20 20 yeah and now it's checking down that we get in open water turns are going to reduce our speed but 20 seems about as top as we go and I saw a 20.3 yeah, we're not getting close to that again. 
So I, I feel confident saying 20.3 was the top speed, at least of that base. Man, we are slowing down as we get out to this, too. 20.5, 20.6. Woo. All right. So I'm going to hit escape one last time. Getting down to this base, and then we'll be done. So we're at 11 minutes. Not sure if we're going to get better in 14 minutes, but we shall take a shot at it. Uh, since I'm going to wrap up, just when we finish this up, be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, next weekend's July 3rd, and July 4th is a, a Saturday. We're actually going to do uh, Fleet Friday. Uh, so if you want to join us, that's great. You don't have to, uh, as always. Uh, and then on the other side of that, we're going to add a little bit more to each Fleet Friday. We're going to do some webinars, um, share some historic, um, some of the professional development that real engineers do to learn about uh, previous ships and previous shipwrecks that help inform us to know what to do and what not to do now. Uh, so kind of be a little bit of history and a lot of engineering, but there'll be like an hour, an hour and a half. You'll see a schedule come out each Monday. And it'll help you understand what we're going to do that Friday. And it'll be, this will kick off the day at 9 a.m. Eastern. We will start having those webinars during the middle of the day. And we'll have an ability for you to ask questions. And if you don't join us live, you can always email us, fleet at navalengineers.org. And we can follow up uh, over email and help out with, it, with whatever we need to do. So we're unloading my last cargo, my helicopter fuel. And now we're going to see the score. So we got 3,082. Ah, our score went down. So let's take a peek at what's going on. So we did 3 minutes 28. Our max speed, we got that 20.6 knots. Uh, 13.28. No collisions, no groundings. Our, we traveled 11,353.02, 3,081. Oh, I didn't record this. More question marks. So our time went down. Um, and honestly, I think part of that is the game looks at the test that you do. Uh, and it knew that this ship was a little bit slower. And I think it docked us for that a bit. Because we were faster in how we did it. We traveled less distance, which is also a good thing. Uh, but our ship itself was not faster. So I think what we would want to do is engineer a faster ship, but maybe follow this path. Uh, and for those of you that really have some time, and, and honestly, this is a good time to do something that's fun, but really puts your academic brain, your kind of your scientific brain into test. Uh, what, I, what I encourage you to do is really get into this mission, figure out the time for each base, think about the right path, and really get very specific about how you are going to win this mission, how you're going to be first. And work on it. It's not going to take a half hour. You don't have to do it in one sitting. You could have a goal for doing an hour where you kind of figure out the first base or two and then come back the next day and figure out the second base, the third base try to put it all together, work on the ship itself too, uh, and really be quite, you know, engineer the best solution. If you have any questions at any time on any part of this or just naval engineering in general, you can email us. I will respond to you as quickly as I can. Fleet, F-L-E-E-T, at naval, N-A-V-A-L, engineers, E-N-G-I-N-E-E-R-S dot org, O-R-G, okay? And we will get back to you right away and really help you out this summer to make it a, a great learning experience. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Fleet Friday.